Nice church you had there. Be a shame if somebody subverted it, wasn't it? At a time where Christianity, and particularly in England, is dwindling into extinction, every church is being subverted from within to alienate the last few worshippers who actually care about those dotty old things like God or biblical morality. Let's look at some of the most egregious examples of how archbishops, priests, and various sects are trying to lead the flock astray. Speaking of the destruction of the church, if you subscribe to lotuseaters.com, you'll be able to get articles like this from Bo Dade about the spontaneous church combustion that's been happening all across various countries in Europe, particularly that weird Notre Dame fire, which, well, one man admitted to doing it, but it's still inconclusive, just an accidental arson. And Bo narrates all of his articles as well, so if you want to hear Bo's dulcet tones, well, he really puts the effort in. Go and have a listen. So let's go over to the Anglicans. The Anglicans are at it again. Before you say this, I read uh, somewhere recently Mm. that Gen Z is the first post-Christian generation. I don't know if you agree with this. No. Uh, I haven't made up my mind yet. I don't think so. I, I think that, that Gen Xers and Millennials were vaguely nihilistic and they allowed culture to displace Christianity. And Gen Z are either deliberately socialist or it's bifurcated into two where you see the trad revivalists. I know for some it's a skin suit online and it's especially the, something that women do to appear trad in order to net the highest value male. But some people are real hardcore Christians and Catholics and there's, there's some very wholesome people among that so I'm not I'm not saying that there aren't mm. I do think that there are but the institutions yes particularly educational institutions mm. seem to have taken a post-christian turn and especially churches as you as you have said they have uh, embraced some woke stuff yeah they're signaling fealty to their new religion which yeah as we'll go through, we'll, we'll see the sort of underpinnings of this new religion, particularly gender ideology, as a kind of Promethean ambition to usurp God as creator and have you revolve around yourself as one true son, as Karl Marx put it. So the bishops in the Anglican Church are calling for meat-free Fridays. Why? To hit net zero targets, because the climate change apocalypse has displaced the rapture, or judgment day, as the Bible would say, as the new end times prophecy. In February 2020, General Synod, the church's lawmaking body, voted for a new target to achieve net zero carbon ambitions by 2030 in recognition that the global climate emergency is, quote, a crisis for God's creation and a fundamental injustice. So how could a perfectly created unjust world imbued with the love of God wreak utter vengeance on mankind unless it were God's will? Are you accusing God of trying to destroy us? Very vain there. The fun thing is, are they flying to spread this message across? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. It's like with the live uh, aid. Yeah. Some years, some uh, many years ago, where they were talking about climate and they were flying all around. Well, COP yeah. every year. Biden yeah. had a 28 car motorcade blazing down the. <laughs> the highways of of Glasgow because uh, as well he landed at the wrong airport I think he landed at Edinburgh airport and had to make it all the way to Glasgow by driving down so but the hypocrisy the point of the hypocrisy is it's kind of annoying to point it out I'm I'm not saying to you specifically but yeah we know they're hypocrites but hypocrisy only works if you consider each other human they don't consider us human they just consider themselves better than us so they can fly around Bill Gates can import sand to his own private beach at his house as much as he likes it's we plebs that have to be reduced in order to reduce the carbon pollution an anti has to be put in front of every word. Yes, yeah, like anti-fascist, they say, as they punch you straight yeah. in the face. However, amid concerns that achieving carbon neutrality may take longer than the current seven-year time frame, bishops suggested having a meat-free Friday during Lent could be a way for Christians to personally reduce their carbon footprint. The Bishop of Norwich, Re- Right Reverend Graham Usher, who is also the church's lead bishop for the environment, endorsed the suggestion, saying, it is, after all, entirely in line with a long-established Christian practice in many churches of avoiding meat on Fridays, and not only during Lent. Yep, sure. Absolutely, it's a Christian practice, but it's what you're doing it for that is different. It is not about denying yourself in order to uh, express gratitude that God has provided abundance in all other areas of life. It's to genuflect to the new climate religion. It's to ensure ESG compliance with all of your other globalist buddies. You're just another institution in the cathedral that's going along with the narrative that wants to reduce our way of life and make us very easily controlled. And they're manipulating you by using your own standards to push it through. It's very disingenuous. And I would say that this is a weird way of talking about the demandingness of religious ethics Mm. because religious ethics are demanding Mm. on the one hand but motive is is really crucial Mm. and right i I totally agree with you when you say that the motive here is not uh, has nothing to do with religious sentiment Mm. 
it has to do with pushing forward the woke agenda. Yeah, it's it's also not the sort of kind of continent virtuous Christianity that saw Aristotle combined with St. Thomas Aquinas. It's not you cultivating individual gratitude to deepen your relationship yeah. with God. It's you making personal sacrifices for the collectivist goal of perfecting the earth, going towards an end of history, which is a vain way of stewarding ourselves towards a perfectible history when the actual book of Revelation says you never know when the second coming is going to happen. So just be continent and don't necessarily work towards collectivist goals, but work on yourself so that when you when comes the day you're unexpectedly judged, you will be judged accordingly. And also virtue signaling in the meantime, hmm. because this is something that they do for recognition, whereas in most traditions in virtue ethics, when you do something for the recognition and how people see you, that's not considered to be very virtuous. Exactly, in, according to the Gospel of Matthew that says those that pray on street corners are not true Christians. Don't make a public spectacle of your religious prostrations. Actually be dedicated to it. You know, it should be introspective, not outwardly facing. Uh, on to the next one as well. Turns out that apparently MPs in Parliament are trying to strong-arm the Church of England into recognising same-sex marriages, and it turns out that they did it anyway. So the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, claimed he was threatened with parliamentary action in an attempt to force same-sex marriage into the Church of England. Speaking at Global Anglican Consultative Council, ACC, meeting in Ghana, so they were flying after all, Justin Welby said many members of the General Synod have dismissed his concerns about recent reforms. The Archbishop's comments came after the Church of England's Legislative Assembly, General Synod, passed a motion to allow the blessing of same-sex couples and civil partnerships earlier this month. In his presidential address to the ANT plenary of the ACC, Welby said rules about sexuality in the Church of England have been tabled for a discussion as a result of growing atheism in the UK. He told those at the meeting held in Ghana and capital Accra that in the global north, as Callum has already debunked, putting China in the global south is insane. They've got a much larger population than us. They've got far more natural resources and we are impoverishing ourselves as the Chinese, despite their demographic collapse, are building themselves up. So global north and global south is entirely false dichotomy and it's a materialist one, which the Christian shouldn't be adopting. But there you go, Justin Welby's not much of a Christian. Definitely not. Uh, Christian values of community and mutual responsibility have been almost eliminated in favour of individualism. Well... The individual dignity of each person conferred to themselves by God is a Christian value. That's why Christianity was the bedrock of liberalism. I have my gripes of liberalism, don't get me wrong. But community and mutual responsibility. Yes, community is a British value. It's a Christian value. But somehow I think they're smuggling in Marxist precepts in that term. I, When people talk about individualism, mm. I instantly get a bit uh, frustrated mm. because they have to qualify the kind of individualism that they're talking about. Mm. Are they talking about political individualism, social, moral individualism. Yes. Just by throwing the word individualism out there, they don't qualify the point. Yeah. They're I, just saying you're now supposed to go boo. I agree. We're far too atomized and disconnected from community, but I don't understand how this rebuilds community because communities only exist if they preserve the integrity of their moral ethos. That's how you attract people to specific areas. If, if every community is indistinguishable from each other, <clears throat> why should I belong to one over the other? Yeah. It's if Christianity is indistinguishable from Islam, then I wouldn't like I have a religion because I don't agree with Islam. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So it's interesting he actually says here that it is because of the rise of people who are not religious. And he actually says that there is no there is no threat from Islam or or even if there are rising rates of Judaism to Christianity. It's only that people don't care about Christianity anymore. That is the reason why we should table amendments to how the Christian church perceives same sex marriages. No, you do not take the divine doctrine which you have to believe if you are a christian if you're not a christian you can kind of just dismiss it out of hand right even though quite a lot of our civilizational precepts are based on that and it's very valuable but if you're a christian you have to treat the bible itself as the received wisdom by the men who wrote it and compiled it from god or the holy spirit and so you don't get to manipulate the moral axioms set forth in that for your own ends, for the, for the contemporary concerns of the present, just to try and win friends. Because that might be Machiavellian and expedient, and it might get you more favour with a secular culture, but it will get you judged adversely by God at the end. And that's kind of the entire point. The, the entire woke sentiment revolves around changing words yeah. and manipulating definitions. Mm. It's the inversion of logocentrism. Yeah. Rather than God speaking the world into being, you are erasing the role of God by trying to speak your own reality into being. And this is why they are miserable people, because they are trying to go against reality and confect a consensus reality to soothe their consciences that are screaming at them from the inside. And eventually, the enforcement costs of running against reality will happen. And that's why you see 
a very high suicide rate among some very non-reality compliant communities. And that's all we can say for YouTube. Next, speaking of said communities, the Church of England has said God is gender neutral. No. No, it's, it's, it's kind of capital H him and he and father, you know, that, that denotes some gender in there. Reverend Joanna Stobart from the Diocese of Bath and Wales, Wales argued what steps were taken to offer congregants alternatives to return, referring to God with male pronouns and if there was any way to update to develop more inclusive language in our authorised liturgy. She also asked bishops to provide more options for those who wish to use authorised liturgy and speak of God in a non-gendered way, particularly in authorised solutions where many of the prayers offered for use refer to God using male pronouns. So they literally want to get rid of the Lord's Prayer because it starts with our Father. You're just not a Christian. Get out. Get out, you disgusting subversive. You are trying to wrestle away the preferred pronouns of God, the Father. And even if, again, even if you're a non-Christian, there's a lot of utility in conceptualizing of an ephemeral Father that hangs over you. Because what keeps men accountable? The threat of violence. Okay, are you going to be afraid of your ephemeral mother? No, because she's not going to belt one you one harder than your dad can belt you if you do the wrong thing. And so, in prayer, when you're meant to be talking aloud or thinking aloud in your head, you're meant to be completely honest and accountable, not just to yourself, but to the ephemeral father who can give you a clip around the ear if you say the wrong thing or if you're being untruthful, because he always knows if you're untruthful. So there is utility in the conception of God as an ephemeral father, even if you don't buy the biblical doctrine in and of itself. But as a Christian, you're meant to buy the biblical doctrine. And it starts off with he. There's a reason that when he was incarnated, he became Christ and had to impregnate a woman for it. I'm willing to bet that those who are behind this, they're, yep. not, they're not going to think about what you said. Yep. They're not thinking of it in that term. They, they hate tradition yes. and they want to change it because it is tradition. Hmm. And they are making s large sweeping generalizations about hmm. Western civilization. Yep. And it's all an attempt to create chaos yes. and to make us... Um, turn her back towards her own tradition and communal uh, bonds. I like how you said chaos because the thing which preceded creation and God making order out of chaos was the formless void. And we're on a series of infinite linguistic regressions that turn us back to a nihilistic state. So we're basically destroying ourselves until we become that formless potential of chaos yet again. And that's actually very useful for the socialists because if you start from year zero, if you start from total chaos, then you can reconstruct man in your particular image. And that's what they like. And you're right. I'm not speaking to these people. I'm speaking to the actual Christians in the audience. I know there's some priests that even watch us, apparently. Do not be afraid to gatekeep and stand up for the ethics of your religion. And don't be gaslit into thinking that inclusivity doctrine is within the Christian tradition because they're obviously trying to use our own standards against us to make us hate our religion and crumble it from within. Because like in Maccabees, for example, the only thing that stands between totalitarianism and uh, uh, people submitting to it is the fear that this is all we have, this is the only life, right? If if you are so afraid of dying and not being judged for your ethics after you die, then you will go along with the regime. But if you have the faith that what matters is your personal integrity and you will be rewarded for it in the next life, then you are not compliant with a dictator when he says he's going to threaten you for it. And they know that, and that's why Marx specifically called Christianity an opiate of the masses, and he wanted to uh, raise critical consciousness by destroying Christianity and having Marxism take its place. So, the move has been criticised, obviously, by conservatives, hello, who have warned that male and female imagery is not interchangeable. However, liberal Christians have welcomed it, claiming that a theological misreading of God as exclusively male is the driver of much continuing discrimination and sexism against women. I don't suppose you've read the letters of St. Paul, have you? He'll be taken out soon. Details of the plans emerge in the written question to the liturgical commission which pre prepares and promotes forms of service and religious worship in the church at General Synod. Professor Helen King, the vice chairman of Synod's gender and sexuality group, get rid of it. Gone. Gone. Totally out. Questions around gendered language and God have been around for decades, if not centuries, but still have the power to bring out strong reactions. For some, God as Father is helpful because of their own positive experiences of a loving parent. For others, God as Father may reinforce a bad experience of a strict disciplinarian as their father. If we dig deeper, clearly God is not gendered, so why do we restrict our language to God in gendered ways? So it's projection. So it's because you didn't like your dad, you're trying to destroy the entire religion. There's kind of a, a verse in the commandments that says, honour thy mother and thy father. That doesn't mean always submit to them. It means treat them accordingly. So if your father and mother have done as God commanded, 
and loved each other and loved you, then of course you incorporate yourself in that family structure. If they have been sinful, if they have rejected you as their child, they've, they've absconded the duty to care over you, then you do one better. You, you improve from their immoral example and you embody the love of God as the father and have your own children and break that cycle and, and ensure that, that you are doing the right thing out into the future. And there are, and I must say that there are people who have had troubled hmm. families, yeah, cool. troubling families, and bad parents, and they did not react in this particular way. Hmm. So the, there are many people who have had, let's say, bad fathers and bad mothers, and they did not proceed to reject the entire institution of the family. Yeah, and they are really happy about the fact that other people did not have the bad upbringing that they had. Hmm. So I think that if the Church of England, or whoever, I, I don't want to talk about the institution, I want to talk about the people who are behind this approach towards the woke movement. Yes. If they're trying to do this, they're actually trying to appeal to those who are, let's say, least virtuous in that sense. Mm. They're not trying to appeal to the people who may have had trouble, a troubling past, but they do genu genuinely love other people. Mm. They They are interested in talking to people who say, just because I didn't have a good upbringing, no one else should. Yeah. And I think, I think Stefan Molyneux you said something similar before, but child abuse can make either an implosive angel or an explosive demon. It either causes a cycle of abuse, like with single mothers you see as the leading yeah. predicate for sexual abuse, drug misuse, criminality, poverty. It either creates people who perpetuate that cycle because they were never given a, a successful model, or it creates people that were destroyed, very introspective, and afford to their children all that they were deprived. If you encounter wrong and evil, yeah. it you may just uh, fall into the habit of or trap of following evil, mm. or you could have a stronger consciousness being developed from very early on. Exactly, and that's what the church should be teaching, yeah. but unfortunately, they're not. Uh, it's not just exclusive to the Anglicans. I say this with great sigh. The Catholic Church are doing pretty badly as well, particularly in England and Wales. Uh, apparently it's throughout the world, but I, I heard of this in, in my own church and they weren't going with it. My priest decided to do an anti-critical race theory um, homily on the day. So good on him. Well done, lad. Other churches, not so much, because it turns out they've made Mary and Jesus black. If we can just scroll down to the image, John... The Catholic Church has unveiled posters depicting Mary and Jesus as different ethnicities as part of an anti-racism drive launched in the wake of George Floyd's murder. That's not it, John. Just keep going down. There we go. The Saviour was born in Wakanda, I suppose. I guess there's a reason that Joseph disappeared halfway through the Gospels. He went out to Bethlehem to get cigarettes. The images showing biblical fi figures as capital B Black... Asian and Middle Eastern are to reflect the rich diversity of the church community. Do you want to scroll down to the Asian one as well, John, so you can feel represented? There you go. Don't laugh, John. It is the imperial costume of the Chinese, yeah. Yeah. Not great. Not 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 fantastic, especially considering how the Chinese treats Catholics at the moment. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales released the artwork as part of its newly launched Racial Justice Sunday event created after George Floyd's death. Right. You know what? Honestly, sorry, I mean... The woke movement, it's surprisingly boring. Yeah, it's very predictable. Not surprisingly. Yeah, it's it, its very predictable and very boring. But this is the supplanting of Christ with the new Messiah, which is George Floyd. who, As Nancy Pelosi said, thank you, George Floyd, for dying for racial justice. Right. So you're just adopting and conscripting people after, the, after they've passed into your ideological causes, the martyrs, are you? And, and there is the idea that we should color should not matter, but this brings us back to color does matter. Yeah, but that's because critical race theorists have infiltrated most of these institutions, yeah, and yeah. they do think color matters because they want to raise critical consciousness to the point of where you can create a revolutionary consist constituency out of black people and Asian people who think they're hard done by. And they think that one cannot be racist towards white people, which is completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. On to the next one then. The uh, the Catholic League have also discovered that the. FBI have got an internal memo targeting extreme Catholics. So a whistleblower leaked a report produced by the FBI's Richmond field office titled Interest of Racially or Ethnically Motivated Violent Extremists in Radical Traditionalist Catholic Ideology Almost Certainly Presents New Mitigation Opportunities. 
So if you're against wokeness in the church, you'll be cracked down on by the feds. Um, FBI whistleblower Kyle Serafin, who we've covered on the channel before, an FBI special agent for six years, revealed the report, analyzed that Catholics who prefer Latin mass and pre-Vatican II teachings can amount to adherence to an anti-Semitic, anti-immigrant, anti-LGBT and white supremacist ideology. This is all just projection and all made up. That that notoriously Latin language of white supremacists. Yeah. I, I disagree that the Italians are white. And I'm sure that throughout history, Catholics who preferred Latin mass, they had anti-LGBTQ sentiments. Yeah, that's... Conscious ones. That's kind of yeah. called Christianity, I'm yeah. afraid. As especially, if that's not an anachronism. Yeah, well, especially because the well, the, the Q is a revolutionary constituency get, thought up by Gail Rubin, who said we should destigmatize boy love. And also the T posits that God got creation wrong and that you can remake yourself and your own image, which is... I don't think I can say what I think of that on YouTube. On to the next one. Um, the FBI designated the rosary as a hate symbol. This was after an Atlantic article came out saying the rosary is an extremist symbol. This is what Americans' taxpayer cash is going towards. So keep praying, Catholics. You're going to need it. Um, also, Pope Benedict released a posthumous book recently after passing away. He had to publish it posthumously. And if you want to read through the thread in your own time, there's some eye-opening revelations in here. But a couple of these are Pope Benedict, and this is from the translation. For my part in life, I no longer want to publish anything. The fury of the circles against me in Germany is so strong that the appearance of ev my every word immediately causes a murderous shouting from them. I want to spare myself and Christendom this. He said there are gay clubs and seminaries, and that one bishop subjected priests to training to watch pornographic films. So the excuse was he was trying to test their faith. Oh, I'm just showing two men bumming. It's, uh, do, you, do you feel stronger with God yet? Definitely isn't grooming whatsoever. Uh, Michael Knowles also in this thread pointed out that Amazon froze purchase of the, purchases of the book after the translation started coming out. So it's very inconvenient for the current Marxist occupying the Vatican that, that this is released. And then I'd just quite like to, to wrap up on one last story, and that is the Lutherans are not getting off the hook. Ryan Turnipseed, who yes, it is his actual name, and it's really funny because after this thread, lots of people were outraged that he had uh, such an impact in exposing this catechism that was put out by the Lutheran Church. They said, why have the Lutherans fallen for an anonymous account? No, it's it's just his actual name. It's quite ridiculous, but it is quite funny. So well done to Ryan for reading through this. He's got a thread on the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and they've changed some of the ethics in it that aren't quite biblical. So they put out a new edition, a new edition of Luther's Large Catechism, one of the main books used to teach people about Christianity and what it means to be a Christian. First, we have the LCMS speaking for conservative Lutherans, entirely denying self-defense and bearing arms being moral. So if we can scroll down, please, John, just as we talk through this. Um, he just says there's no right to bear arms, so getting explicitly political and renouncing the American Constitution. They then try and draw a false equivalency between being gay and a pedophile, so if we can click on that image, John, if that's all right, I'll just read that out. Though some of us are burdened with homosexual lust, pornographic addiction, transgenderism, paedophilia, and polyamory, destiny enraged, more often they are the speck in our neighbor's eye rather than the log in our own. Right. So he's actually saying that you can't judge paedophiles because you might have sworn at some point in your life. No, no. Read the Gospel of Matthew a little bit more and you'll find out the penalty for paedophilia is a millstone around the neck flung into the sea because you will not be judged favourably by God. Um, he then says that gay and trans Christianity is just as Christian as any other lifestyle. He says that Genesis is to be discarded because it conflicts with scientific theories. Um, they also sort of see transgenderism as moral to bring your internal soul in line with your body. So they promote the Gnostic project of self-recreation. Again, thinking God got it wrong. Um, it mentions economic and societal privilege. So more Marxist terms there. So all of this thread was posted on January the 21st, as you can see. On January the 23rd, the Lutheran Church put out a Facebook post saying the distribution of this catechism had been rescinded so they could reflect on feedback. So then all the leftists got upset and thought that Ryan had a fake name. So he had a bit of fun with that. And then on February 2nd, the president said that the new catechism is in line with the church's teachings and it's resumed its distribution. So nothing's changed. So the church is an entirely captured institution, unfortunately. I want to make a point about the rosary. Go for it. Because I think that it is very important and uh, it shows uh, how the political spectrum has moved mm. in a way. Uh, one of the most influential doctrines in political philosophy of the last decades is John Rawls's political liberalism. Yes. I think uh, I really disagree with it. I must say, but Rawls there 
who has been taken by many people from the left as being someone who talks about market socialism and uh, property owning democracy. And he has given this idea that liberalism is closer to the left than it was traditionally understood to be. Mm. He says that the state should be neutral with respect to views about the good life. And he talks about that with about religions predominantly. And he says that, for instance, the state of secular countries should not be partial towards the religion of the people who are the who form the majority of the population. Mm. When they try to portray the rosary in, as a symbol of hatred, mm. I think they cross even that line. Yes, of course. Which may not, I, I'm not convinced by what Rawls says, but this goes a step further and it tries to, you could say, demonize. And well, it, it just shows you that the, the separate... That's not neutrality. That's no. what I mean. Your, your, your poli take, your, take your religion out of my politics argument, and politics should be separate from religion, was never sincere. It was always a praxeological tool to get Christianity out of the institution so they could replace it with woke socialism. That's all it is. So you're going to serve one God one way or another. I, I don't think it's possible to separate theological precepts from political precepts all of the time. I'm not saying I want a, a Catholic theocracy, but I am saying that if you operate off of Christian precepts, then you can have a much better society than an Islamic or a woke socialist one. So just onto the, to, onto the last bit, if you don't believe that intersectionality is a satanic project, I'd like to read a little bit from the first article I actually did for the website back before I even worked here urging Americans to abandon the concept of equality, even though it's written in the Constitution. So, in unsettling the coloniality of being true uh, freedom, one of the founding CRT writers, Sylvia Winter, charged the Enlightenment thinkers with defining men in a fashion which excludes non-white people. She contested that scientific inquiry and appeals to biblical scripture were used to justify the transatlantic slave trade. The epochal rupture that was set in motion by Western intellectuals led to the gradual development of the physical sciences by the no less epochal reinvention of Western Europe's matrix Judeo-Christian genre of the human. So to translate from the gobbledygook, the Enlightenment and the scientific revolution displaced man's understanding of himself as made imago Dei, in the image of God, with defining his nature through reason and empirical inquiry. This shift in epistemology facilitated a new form of exclusion, predominantly excluding black and native people from the category of men in America, whose rights were recognised by the Constitution but not technically extended to them for some period of time. Non-whites were, according to Winter, considered, quote, irrational, subrational others, and accordingly deprived of rights. And then Winter obviously immediately and conveniently omits the amount of Christians that were involved in the abolition movement during the writing of the Constitution itself, like Ben Franklin. This definition emboldened their consolidation of power, truth, and freedom among their Western bourgeois ethnoclass. They want to get rid of Christianity because it's the only thing stopping them seizing power. And so this is my message to Christians, right? I know you're not in the institutions that are controlling this stuff, but do kick up a fuss against the churches that are doing it because... It's not for inclusion. It's to deliberately subvert your religion from within to make you nihilistic and miserable and easily ideologically captured by their counter-religion of intersectional socialism, where God is not at the top, man is. Which man? The person telling you that you're a racist and they're going to take all your stuff. Don't stand for it. Because as William Ralph Inge argued, if you marry the spirit of your generation, you'll be a widow in the next. And I suggest that widowing the church itself is the goal. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the premium podcast, this one on the origins of evil of feminism. If you'd like to find out what else the Lotus Eaters are putting out, you can follow on Gitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Gitter. Thank you and goodbye.